Macquarie Bay is located on the northern coast of Trinidad within the Tucker Valley area in the Chagramas National Park. The bay is sheltered by steep vegetated slopes and surrounded by predominantly tropical dry forest. Trinidad and Tobago experiences a dry season from January to May, a wet season from June to December, with transitory periods in May and December. Temperatures range between 26 and 32 degrees Celsius on the surface and between 28 and 29 degrees in the sea. Trinidad's location on the southern edge of the North Atlantic hurricane belt makes Macquarie relatively sheltered from storms, although the potential to be affected still exists. This area is best known for its natural beauty, which is a product of its complex ecosystems. Additionally, it supports economic activity on-site through vending and facility maintenance and is a significant ecotourism asset for the country. The diverse habitat types, plants and animal species that we see are all part of a complex ecosystem assemblage comprising both terrestrial and marine components. The biotic or living and abiotic or non-living components are inextricably linked to one another and influence the overall health of ecosystems. Both marine and terrestrial food webs derive their energy from the sun. Primary producers then play the vital role of capturing the sun's energy and making it bioavailable to all other trophic levels in the food web. The 2012 Tucker Valley BioBlitz survey recorded a rich species biodiversity, including 195 plant species, 98 bird species, 4 termite, and 26 scorpion species. The survey also found 6 ants, 37 butterfly and 33 spider species. 11 species of mammals inhabit the area, including the tufted capuchin monkey, which was introduced to Trinidad from the US military zoo once located in Chagaramas. 33 species of reptiles and amphibians were also found, including the green sea turtle. Marine species included 74 species of fish and 29 species of medarians, which include coral and sea anemone. Overall, 628 species were found in the area, all serving important roles in this diverse ecosystem. All habitats and components of the ecosystem are connected in one way or another by the various natural cycles present, such as the hydrological, carbon and nutrient cycles. Through the processes of evaporation and transpiration, water enters the atmosphere from water bodies, the soil and plants. Through precipitation, water re-enters the system as rain, providing important freshwater supplies needed for the maintenance of freshwater habitats, transportation of nutrients and organisms, hydration, and chemical reactions necessary to sustain life. Through respiration, plants convert atmospheric carbon dioxide to oxygen and integrate carbon within their cells serving as important oxygen producers and sequesters of carbon, locking it away in their biomass and helping to regulate the impacts of climate change. Carbon is also the building block of life on Earth and cycled to all other organisms as inorganic and organic carbon in the air, water and soil medium. The soil is an important sink for inorganic and organic forms of nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium and sulfur, which are cycled throughout the water and atmosphere as well. Nutrients are made available to plants growing in the soil and consequently to all other trophic levels. Decomposition of plant and animal matter by bacteria and fungi return these nutrients to the soil where it can be transported via water or the air to other habitats. Energy is also supplied to all living organisms through complex food webs, all of which are fueled by energy from the sun, which is captured by primary producers. These are plants on the land and marine phytoplankton and algae in the sea. Through consumption, energy and nutrients are passed from primary producers to primary consumers, then to secondary and tertiary consumers. Through death and decomposition, these elements are then recycled within the ecosystem. There are natural linkages between the area's marine and terrestrial ecosystems. Apart from being linked by the hydrological, carbon and nutrient cycles, important interactions occur between land and sea. For example, a healthy vegetation cover is important for consolidating the soil 
and preventing erosion into the sea. Heavy runoff of sediment can smother reefs and block sunlight needed for primary production. Healthy coral reefs and seagrass beds also play a role in dissipating wave energy and protecting the shoreline. Runoff of detritus and falling leaves also provide some nutrients to the marine environment. Seabirds, such as pelicans and frigates, also depend on the ocean for their food source, and marine turtles depend on access to unpolluted beaches for nesting. The final element to be considered is the human element one that has great potential to impact and transform the natural environment. Being a popular recreational destination, the Macarib area has a notable presence of human activities such as hiking and mountain biking, zip lining, picnicking, bending, shower and washroom facilities, swimming, diving and snorkeling, and fishing. Permanent man-made structures such as roads, car park, residential, vending and restroom facilities represent permanent habitat loss and fragmentation. Such human presence reduces space available for wildlife, some of which may even reduce their ranges further so as to minimize the chance of interaction with humans. Paved surfaces and frequently used hiking and biking trails where the soil is compacted can result in increased runoff rates and impaired infiltration and storage of water in the soil. High volumes of rainwater running off can pick up more sediment and surface pollutants that may end up in the bay. This can cause increased stability and in sedimentation of corals and other bottom dwelling organisms, as well as obstruction of sunlight penetration for photosynthesis. Impaired primary production will have a ripple effect of reduced food throughout the entire food web. Transferred oil, grease and fuel leakages from vehicles utilizing the car park is another pollution source of concern. Rain runoff will also transfer these pollutants to the surrounding land and marine habitats. Waste generated from the on-site cafeteria such as used cooking oils, food scraps and discarded food packaging must be properly disposed of. The site is equipped with adequate garbage bins for proper disposal and is cleaned and maintained regularly under the management of the CTA. Sewage and grey water waste from the shower and restroom facilities must also be carefully managed to avoid environmental contamination. In addition to human health concerns, sewage contamination can lead to excessive bacterial content and nutrient enrichment in the environment. Marine waters contaminated by high levels of sewage may experience depleted oxygen levels due to the higher than normal bacterial and algal activity. This in turn has a negative impact on other marine organisms. Runoff from shower facilities also has the potential to introduce harmful chemicals from soap and shampoos as well as microplastic beads into the sea where they have toxic effects on marine life. Microplastic beads found in some face washers are also convenient carriers for other marine pollutants to adhere to. These beads are then easily ingested and embedded into living tissue and bioaccumulated up the food chain. These contaminants and their potential health effects are then passed on to human consumers. Litter is also a significant problem facing the area. Although adequate bins are provided, litter still pollutes the land and marine environments. Plastic bottles and bags in particular release harmful substances as they degrade and as mentioned, microplastic particles are pollutants of great concern. Turtles present in the area may also accidentally ingest plastic bags, mistaking them for jellyfish, which may eventually lead to their deaths. Fishing on site may satisfy the recreational pursuits of some, however this activity reduces the biodiversity of marine life. 
Discarded fishing lines also pose a threat of entanglement and ghost fishing for marine life long after fishermen leave. Fish that manage to escape may have hooks embedded in them with line which may become entangled and needlessly trap the fish. The spotted eagle ray that had become well known to many snorkelers and swimmers was unfortunately killed by entanglement in fishing lines. Marine turtles that inhabit the bay also face similar risks of falling victim to accidental bycatch. Careful management of this site will ensure that negative impacts are reduced or avoided. Continuation of site upkeep is important as well as increased cleanup efforts which should involve frequent underwater cleanups. The banning of spear gun fishing is a positive development, however enforcement of the ban requires additional supervision of beachgoers. In the event of an oil or fuel spill from off-site oil and gas production facilities or passing ships, it is recommended that floating boom be kept on reserve to seal off the bay from any possible contamination being transported by currents. Other possible solutions to potential impacts include on-site wastewater treatment of grey water and sewage effluent, a closed drainage system and sump that is pumped and treated on-site to capture hydrocarbon type waste from vehicles in the car park, maintenance of vegetated hillsides to mitigate erosion, and ensuring there are no bright lights on land or near sea to avoid disturbing the circadian rhythms of plants and influencing the behavior of animals which may gather around bright lights at night. Contributions from the existing car park fee and additional sources of funding can be put to good use towards the sustainable management of the site. Awareness of how the natural environment and its ecosystem components function is important to managing human impacts. Through responsible, sustainable management, the natural beauty of Macri and the Tucker Valley area will continue to be one of the gems of Trinidad and Tobago.